Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Norfly Tibbages, and in this video I'm going to have a look at a question I'm asked quite often, and it's, uh, should I buy a new printer? Now, I get asked this for a variety of reasons, quite often after I've um, done a review, and somebody goes, well, I've got a such and such, is this new printer better? Well, if you have a perfectly good working printer, then the chances of the new one being better really depends on how well you use that old printer. If you've really pushed it as far as you can get, then maybe you'll be able to get more out of a new one. But if you've got a good working printer that's producing prints you like, then why get a new one? Um, okay, if you feel you must have new kit, well, more fool you. Um, it really probably won't benefit you that much. Now, what about if your printer's broken? Now, is this broken because you've left it for ages and not used it. That could be a clue as to what you should think about in terms of getting a new printer, because if you've not used the old one much, why didn't you use the old one? Can it be fixed? Now, older printers are often relatively easy to fix. Um, they're certainly easier to open up and get inside and access the parts. Whether you can get the parts is another matter, but have a look if you've got a particular broken printer, have a look on YouTube, something like that. It's one of the few things I will actually use YouTube for personally is to find how to take things apart and fix them. Um, it's got good information there. But what about getting paying someone to fix it well you might be able to find someone but it's probably going to be quite expensive depends how good this old printer of yours is if it's something like one of the earlier versions of this p5000 here so one of the a p uh, an sp4000 for example quite a few years old then it may be worth it there are groups you can check out and see about fixing you can ask people about how to repair stuff like that there is a lot of repair information available but i do appreciate that I'm relatively unusual, having an electronics background, I'm quite happy taking kit apart and fixing it. But even I go at a certain point now, get rid of it, junk it, it's scrap, I'm sorry. I'll give it away for parts if possible, but there comes a point where you have to go, yeah, do I really want this? Secondly, for your old printer that's potentially working, how easy and how expensive is it to get ink for it? Can you still get inks? Do Epson, Canon, whatever, do they still support it with inks? Do you anticipate this continuing? Because at a certain point, some printers, the inks are just not gonna be available. You go, oh, well, that doesn't matter. I use third-party ink. Well, if you use third-party ink, you've already answered an awful lot of questions. Um, to my mind, there's essentially a, dual, a ch simple choice if you want to use third-party ink. Do you go for cheap or do you go for quality? You can't have both. If you are going for third-party inks because they save you money, well, you're obviously not that bothered by what I'd call print quality. If you're using third-party inks and you do your own profiling and everything like that, then good. You are very much in the minority. Most people do it because they're cheap. But if you're using third-party inks specifically, well, can these inks be used on a new printer? Um, is it worthwhile keeping the old one going for that? Now, let's just say that you've either fixed it, you've found some inks, your printer works. How old's this printer that you've got? Printers have come on rather a lot. And I would say that to compare a printer from 10, 15 years ago with a modern printer, the design of them has changed a lot. The fundamentals haven't. Um, now, the fundamentals about putting droplets of ink on paper have not changed that much. It's the way those ink droplets are arranged and how they're done. It's how the printing works that has changed. But the fundamentals of ink on paper have not changed. Now that means that in some ways, new printers will not give you a really obvious difference between uh, your old printer and your new printer. If you are hoping that buying a new printer would miraculously make your prints look better, then I'm gonna say this, you're almost certainly gonna be disappointed. It doesn't work that way. One aside from that is if you had an Epson printer go wrong on you in 2004 or you had a Canon printer that uh, leaked ink and caused problems in 2005, do check your biases in at the door when you're actually evaluating new printers. The 
Canon printers, Epson printers are similar but different. So have a look. I've got loads of reviews of current printers and I will say if you want the real detail do check out the main written reviews as well because the written reviews have lots more detail. The written reviews I can go over, I can refine, I can update, I can correct. The videos are just the video, they're shot, that's done. I can't, if I notice the equivalent of a typo in a video, um, I don't have the ability to go back and edit it and change it and things like that, nor do I really want that. Um, the videos are all done effectively in one take and they are what they are. If you want detail, look at the written stuff. Uh, it will have links to all the videos as well, so you can get a mixture of both. But what I would say is that you don't just go, oh, I had a bad Canon printer in the past, so I won't buy Canon. Or sometimes you'll hear people say like, oh, well, Canon printers have replaceable print heads, therefore they must be better. Nonsense, it's a different technology. It's easy to say, remember that a lot of what you read is heavily influenced by marketing. So I always bear that in mind when you're looking for something. But okay, you've decided, I'm, I, wanna, I want a new printer. Um, well, the simple criteria for it really is how much does the printer cost? What can you afford? You have to expand it a little bit more than that because the more you pay for the printer, the less you tend to pay in ongoing running costs. So that means the cost per print of a huge great printer like this P5000 here is lower than a small printer with small ink cartridges. Depends on what you're going to use it for, how much many prints you're going to do. But we're looking, that's a generalization. Um, I've got some stuff looking at costs of prints as well. I think there's a, there's a recent video looking at that with some suggestions for what to look for more information on it. What are your requirements? Well, a lot of people will say, I want print quality. Well, the problem is most people wouldn't know what print quality is if it fell on them. Um, it is a widely used, entirely arbitrary and mostly meaningless term. I've got quite a few videos that address the issue of what do you mean by print quality? I want great print quality. Yeah, we all want great print quality, but it would help if I had a clue what you actually meant by that, if you're asking me a question about buying a printer. So have a think about what print quality really means to you. Next up, there's obviously the size constraint. Um, you may want a large printer, but you may not have the space for it. Uh, that's a constraint on it. I do in the reviews, you can see the sizes of them. In general, um, the larger the printer, the better the quality in general. Next up, office functions. Do you, do you want to be able to print you know, spreadsheets, documents, etc. on it? Do you want a scanner on it? I notice some of them still have a fax. Do you want a fax on it? Um, if you want stuff like that, you're looking for a more general printer and a more general printer tends not to be a more photo oriented printer, photo or artwork. So look for the office functions. Um, also, print quality, as I said, whatever that actually means, um, certainly for me, print quality goes up as the printers get bigger. So if I want to make some A4 size prints, if I'm an A4 size printer, there are relatively few A4 size printers which I would put into the good quality bracket. Whereas when you get to A3+, plus, that's 13 inch width printers, um, you're getting much more. So that is A4. I'm, I'm in the UK, so I use the A paper sizes. Um, that's A4, that's A3, that's A3+, plus, 13 inch by 19 inch. These are even bigger. Um, these were taken done on a 24 inch roll printer. So these are much bigger uh, prints. But if you want big prints, you're going to get a big printer and you're going to pay for it. But you know you want a big printer for that. I'm talking more about desktop stuff here for somebody who's thinking, should I get a new printer? You know, what are you actually going to do with them? So what about, um, as well as office, so you want to print cards. Now, that's card media from one of my tests. That's an awful looking version of my test image. Uh, that's my standard test image I use for checking out printers and paper. This is a version of a test image I've created for testing on cards. And on this one, I can see this is a plain card. Um, it is not an inkjet media. It looks awful. Now, that card, my suspicion is that I could not get what I would regard as a good quality looking print on that off any printer I've tested. 
rubbish paper, rubbish results. Um, there comes a point I get asked, oh, I've got the such and such card stock. Will this printer produce cards on it? Um, unless it's a media that's made for inkjet use, then you're going to get rather dismal looking results like that. You may not be able to see it on the video, but the colours are washed out. There's no great strength of colour. The detail, the text doesn't look too bad, but you know, it's, it's fine for that. Maybe for a simple placeholder, but certainly not for a greetings card. No, you want far more on that. So print quality tends to come with bigger printers. Do you want a bigger printer? Do you want to pay for a bigger printer? Uh, the ink costs may be slightly lower, uh, so that, but certainly if you're really looking for better print quality, then A3 Plus is your minimum size, 13 inch width. Um, there, there are relatively few A4 printers I would be happy in using for, for that, because I can't but help thinking when I print something like this, if only I could print something bigger. Um, you, if you start printing bigger, then you will probably find that you rather like printing bigger. Of course, it's affected by the quality of your photography and everything. Another aspect of print quality is the use of profiles. Do you use colour profiles? Have you got colour profiles for the old printer you've got? Now, if you don't use colour profiles, uh, that suggests you've not gone for a particularly advanced printing workflow before. Have you thought about what you need to change to get the best out of the new printer? Uh, because just buying a new printer will of itself probably not make much difference. And there's a chance that the pictures you will think look worse. Uh, it's very easy to happen. Uh, it doesn't do it all for you. So think about things like color management profiles, just screen profile. This, this by the way, is a scan that I did. I've got an example in a review of the Epson ET8550, which is a nifty printer, ink tank printer. Um, and this was for a card. So this was a, this was a scan of a watercolor picture that I then produced as a card. And I've got some videos looking at cards on different printers. If you have a hunt round, but have a look on the website as well, because there's quite a lot of stuff about cards things like this test image and things like that, just to help you get into do using things a bit more. Profiles, papers, so good, good printers support profiles. If you get Canon papers, Epson papers, quite often there'll be profiles for them. Some third party suppliers will produce profiles for you. You can make your own profiles. I've covered that uh, several different ways you print out targets like this. This is some people, some paper suppliers will make profiles for you. You buy some paper, you print out a test pattern, you send it off to them and they'll send you a profile. It's just a, a little data file that the printer system uses to know the characteristics of the paper and printer that it's using. It just makes color better. Um, it makes color more accurate. Um, I should say better and accuracy are not synonymous. Um, there are sometimes where you want accurate color and sometimes where you want better looking color, but that's color management. Now, what about buying this new printer? Um, somebody asked me about, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of investing in a new printer. Now, to me, the word investing in any purchase of something like this is pure marketing. Um, if you're talking from a financial point of view, then uh, unless you've got a, a business where you're going to sell the prints and you know it's going to be a profitable business, it's not really what I'd call an investment. No, really, you are going to be making an investment of your time and effort to learn how to use it properly because good prints need work. Just buying a good printer is not enough. I'm sorry, if you can't produce on a modern printer with good papers, profiles and whatever, if you can't produce great looking prints, color, black and white, it is your fault. If it happens on something I'm producing, if I get a rubbish print, it's my fault. Um, I'm a commercial photographer, professional photographer, architectural photographer, so I'm acutely aware that I am always needing to continue learning. I need to take pictures. I need to learn how to do it better. It's my business. If it's just your hobby, well, in a way, you've got the same thing. You need to take lots of photos. You need to take more photos. You need to actually understand how to use it. Just buying a great printer does not make for great prints, no matter how good it is. Um, 
you know, in one way you can think of it, um, it's like buying a piano or a CD player. If I want to listen to a piano concerto by a particular pianist, I'll buy a CD and listen to it. If I want to actually make the play that concerto, well, it, the chances of me actually doing it, I, you know, I've got a piano, uh, my piano playing is not great, uh, but I enjoy it. That's an investment of my time in something I enjoy. So you don't need necessarily to think you're going to get perfect pictures. Um, you get a lot of benefits out of printing. I've done lots of stuff about this, about the benefits of printing. Learning to print properly improves all of your photography. It's one of the reasons I do it, because it makes a, a real difference. But remember, bad prints, your fault. New printer, potentially better looking prints, but not automatically. So I hope that's of some use and doesn't put you off. But um, you know, if you've got a perfectly good printer currently, then think carefully as to whether you really need a new one. If it's broken, think of what you want to do with it. I anyway, hope that's useful. Thanks for asking questions because it's people asking questions that gives me ideas for videos like this. And if you've got any, please uh, ask them. And thanks for watching.